Hydroponic farming, could this be the solution to combating climate change and food security? How do we use technology to grow sustainable food systems at the end of the day? Today, we're back again at Zandilo Kumalo's farm, neighbor roots in the heart of Santon in Morningside Shopping Center. And today we're gonna to learn about all her operations. What systems is she using to grow this magnificent crop at the end of the day? Do join me as we unpack Zandile's production. This is the Private Property Farming Podcast, and my name is Mbali Noko. Zandile, I can't wait to learn more about your operations. Tell us about the type of crops that you're growing here. Uh, the type of crops that I grow start with this system. Okay. This system is called an aeroponic system. Okay. It's good for households. If you've got a beautiful balcony with enough sunlight, you can have it in your house. It's a plug and play. Trust me, it is. So here at the bottom is the tank. That's where the pump is. It's a booster pump. Okay. And then this is the timer and the DB box. Therefore, this pump pumps the water through these pipes. And as it pumps it inside, the chamber mists up the solution. So you've got all your nutrient solution mixed up in here. And all that you need, depending on the plant that you're growing, it mists up inside the chamber and it makes the root to be moist. Okay. So all the time in a timer of 15 minutes, your roots will always be moist oh, and wow. be white. This looks beautiful. It does. And it is moist. Yes, it is. Oh, wow. And this is spring onion, right? Yes, this is spring onion. Okay. So I grow my spring onion good for herbs, good for spring onion, good for leafy greens. You know, a household, you don't need that much leafy greens. You just yeah. pick, 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 quick cook, and you are done. So with all the crops that you can plant, um, you can be able to plant them for household. It's a 96 pocket plant. Okay. So you can have like 96 different types of plants for your house and you're good to go. And so what other crops do we have in the area? I see spinach down here. So here, you're right in Valley, we have um, spinach or it's Swiss chard and your normal household veggies that yes. you find. So the spinach that we have here, the system is called an open bag system. Okay. It's a, we use drippers to irrigate our system. Luckily for us, how we save our water, we recirculate our water and all our systems. Okay. So the black pipes will be able to put in your water through your sprinklers. Okay. That's your nutrient water. And therefore it gets pumped up as it drips in here the base plates would collect all the excess water that is given to the plant and therefore it will go back through the white pipes and back come the side, it goes back into the tank. Lovely. So, so this is how, running 24-7? Yeah, so this one runs 24-7. You can put it on a timer. So it will all depends on how a farmer wants to do it. So I run it 24-7, I'm on a roof. It gets, sometimes gets too hot. So it helps the plants not to be dehydrated in that manner. I heard you say the water has nutrients. What type of nutrients are you putting into the water? So the type of nutrients that I put in is the normal MPK, your hydroponic mix, and your calcium nitrate. Those two combinations, it helps the plant, my plants to grow. And I use them on all the types of plants that I use in my hydroponic system. Zandile, I see that the leaves are quite strong and green, yeah. very minimal pests and diseases on them. Do you think that this is the benefits of farming hydroponically? So yes, in Bali, with hydro, you get minimum risks of pathogens or pesticides. So the only most of the pests that you would get is like an airborne pest that mm. comes, it's basically powder remote juice your efforts you get nothing at all your soil burnt diseases you'll get nothing at all because what we use as our growing leader is cocoa peat reducing on us getting to deal with cutworms basically yep. wow and take us through down this way i see more spring onions and i presume that is lettuce right yes that is right that is lettuce so in this type of a system this is like the showcase systems that most hydroponic farmers have so it's called an nft hydroponic system this one runs 24 7 you can't put a timer on it because of the minimum growing media that we use for us to be able to grow in the system. Okay. That's why we can't be able to put a timer on it and that's why it runs 24 seven. So with it, same process, it recirculates the water, comes in through the, the micro pipes, the yeah. micro tubes, 
goes down the profile tube, therefore it drains back into the tank with the white pipes. So the water that gets pumped through, the roots are immersed into the nutrient water and that's how they're able to get their food and basically that's how our plants grow. So we move them from seedling, transplanting them, keep them here for about four weeks for them to grow into a maturity stage, then we harvest them. You know that our lettuce, we harvest them as living heads. So basically that's how we're able, giving yeah. them plants with the roots. So do you grow your seedlings internally or do you outsource from other nurseries? So because I'm a small production, I do my own seedlings. Everything is done inside this tunnel. So I do the product, the full production value chain from seedling up until the growth maturity stage. So all types, so I usually do my seedlings for lettuce, for my spring onions, for my herbs, which is chives and basil, and then baby spinach, I sow it directly into the cocoa peat. Nice. Yeah. So how long does it take from seedling to full maturity? Um, I know that you're farming various crops, but if you maybe could give us an average standard time frame of the seedlings. So uh, it all depends on the plants. If I take lettuce for an example, from seed to harvest, it takes about two months. So when you're seedling, prepare your trays, uh, your cocoa peat is there, for them to germinate in a week's time, then the growth stage, this is a propagation stage where you wait for the roots to be able to be able to touch the nutrient water for the roots to grow. So then there I would keep it there for like two weeks. From that two weeks, then I keep it here for about four to five weeks, depending on the size of how the restaurant wants it. You know, restaurants are a really finicky market, so they would want different sizes for yes. different plates. Yes. So then between four to six weeks or four to seven weeks in the winter, that's the length that I keep my lettuce for. Most of the production happens throughout the summer season. What is it that you grow during the winter season? For me, I grow all year round. Wow. Why? Tunnel. Yes. Tunnel farming helps me to be able to grow my crops all year round. Feeding the nutrients directly to the roots also helps me to grow all year round. So I don't have a winter or summer. Okay. Only on tomatoes, where I have my tomatoes throughout the summer season. Mm -hmm. When winter comes in, I put in my spinach. Those are the only two crops that I I do on a circular basis, but my lettuce all year round. Restaurants don't go run out of lettuce for me. Yeah. I see that you've focused a lot on spring onions and lettuce. Now you've told us that you do plant tomatoes. What other crops besides those three do you rotate with? So uh, those are the only ones that I've got at this current moment. My aim, as I've said, is to be able to grow up the market space, much, uh, be able to grow much more varieties. That's when you're going to move into carrots, your microgreens, your strawberries, your berries, so that we can be able to be a better sellers or suppliers to our clients that we have. We just keep on taking the crops bit by bit. Yeah, so the selection of crops, Zandile, is that based on what the clients want? Or is it you just experimenting in terms of what else can you grow in this beautiful systems of yours? No, it's what the client wants, somebody. You can't just grow what the client doesn't want. Otherwise, then you don't have business, you know? Yeah. You're doing it as a hobby. But for you to be able to do it as a business, you need to understand what your, what your clients want, what do they grow. So the lettuce that I'm growing, it's because of the most of the restaurants that I'm supplying are using lettuce on their plates. They are fine dining restaurants of which then lettuce is always on their plate. So hence I've got a larger production of lettuce and that's what I'm supplying. So your spring onions, your baby spinach, I have them in other pocket segments. So it's one or two restaurants that want those type of crops. So that's how I'm able, I was able to choose. I went, looked at their production, uh, their produce list, went into the fridges, said, what do you guys want? How do you, does it grow? What cultivars do you, am I supposed to look out for? And with all that, I was able to bring up my farming model for production size, size section. Having been a hydroponic farmer for a few years now, would you say hydroponic farming is farming for the future? Or would you still advocate for people to farm conventionally? That's a very good question in Bali because a lot of youngsters, when they think about hydro, one thing they don't know is that some hydroponic farmers are farming on ground, are using soil to farm. It's just that we are on a rooftop and we are using these type of modular systems and we are using cocoa peat. You can be able to become a hydroponic farmer still on ground, still being able to plant 
because hydroponics is the, it's the it's the irrigation production system how you feed your nutrients to your plants it's basically that's basically what hydroponic is so you can be able to be both whether you're on ground using soil or whether you are here on the rooftop using cocoa peat you are called a hydroponic farmer so i'd advocate for both yeah, and I see in your farm you're using various systems, right? We were there, um, it's, it's vertical farming. We saw the spinach which was grown in bags with cocoa peat. Right here, they're more uh, um, horizontal type of growing methods. There's no cocoa peat. So how are the plants just living? <laughs> <laughs> so they're living through the nutrient water that we keep on pumping it into the roots. Yeah. Well, there is cocoa peat, but it's just a minimal amount. Okay. of cocoa peat inside. I see more roots. And more roots. Yes. So because they are spoiled plants, you know, they don't go out searching for food. Yes. So they get their food directly as it moves from the nutrients. Yeah, so then the, the nutrients that wow. is passing through. So that's how they grow. So from cocoa peat, just transplanting it from seed, then we allow it to grow, just feeding it di uh, differently. And you know, as it grows, the more it eats and the more it grows stronger. Yeah, and I'm definitely seeing that the advantage of farming undercover um, minimizes any pest or diseases on your crops. What challenges have you experienced right here on your farm? No oh, challenges, it's been out. Because I was a conventional farmer, you know, farming in your backyard doesn't matter whether it's small, whether it's big. When it rains and floods happen, it will kill your whole plantation. Luckily for here, I'm undercover and when it rains, I can still farm smart farming you know yeah. climate is, doesn't affect me it's sunny outside the heat is being reduced by the shelter that i've got which is the plastic that i use and then i'll be able my plants to grow so those type of technologies and systems or how we design our farms to be help us to become smart farmers within the climate changes that happen in our part Wow, well Zandile, I'm quite curious to learn more about your business model over and above just the hydroponic production, just to learn more about the markets that you service and the clients that you formed great relationships with. But thank you so much for detailing your operations to us and explaining how uh, hydroponic farming works and the benefits thereof. Yes, thank you very much. I'm glad to let you know more about my business. <laughs> I hope you learned as much as you could today around hydroponic farming, the various systems and methods in which you can grow your own herbs and vegetables. Join us in the next episode as we chat to Zandile around the business side of things. Continue to like and subscribe to our channel and please share this video with as many people as possible. This is the Farming Podcast brought to you by privateproperty.co.za. My name is Mbali Nwoko. See you next time.